Hello everybody and welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. This film is part one in a series on the history of the gyroplane. This film covers the period from the aircraft's invention to the end of the Second World War. You're all likely to be familiar with the name Joan de la Sierva. His vision and desire to build an aircraft that couldn't stall and spin in led to the creation of the gyroplane. From the aircraft's invention, the concept became so important that all significant rotorcraft engineers of the 20th century gained experience either with or from gyroplanes. The initial problem that Sieva overcame was that caused by dissymmetry of lift, solved with articulated blades. Sieva's own aircraft evolved greatly from this early C6 model of 1924 based upon Avro's 504 biplane. The aircraft had a fixed rotor that simply provided lift. Directional control was maintained by conventional ailerons for roll and elevators for pitch. Rotors, as we saw, were started manually. The early aircraft performed well in the regard that they wouldn't stall or spin. But as you may have guessed, aerodynamic control surfaces were suboptimal with the desire to fly slowly as you can see with the control deflections here. In the landing phase, very often the control surfaces would be stalled and landing accidents resulted as both roll and pitch control is lost, as we're shortly to see from this period film. A gust of wind has been given as the cause, but really it's pilot mishandling. Having failed to make a landing at the first attempt, Rather than going around, he's lingered at very low airspeed and once roll and pitch control are lost, the results become inevitable. The OC ever C-19s tended to have quite a hard time. The aircraft had become commercially popular, in part because it was the first gyroplane with an ability to get the rotors started automatically. The shaped tailplane was used to deflect prop wash as a method of getting the blades turning. The next step in terms of progress came with what was known as direct control and what most recognise as the pre-war gyroplane, the Sierra C-30. By far the most numerous pre-war gyroplane, direct control finally moved in-flight control to the rotor itself. Thus the rotor now provided lift and directional control. The rotor head was controlled by a hanging stick that extended from the rotor head into the cockpit. Direct control was an important step because it provided directional control all the way down to the very slow landing speeds that were seen as part of the operational appeal of a gyroplane. The engine of the C-30 was the same as used in the C-19 and Armstrong Sydney Gennett Major and safety had always been part of a gyroplane promotion and now focus started to shift to the expanding operational envelope and landing speed was now being promoted at nil. The C-30's rotor was pre-rotated mechanically and in total 148 aircraft were built. Production aircraft in the UK built by Avro whilst also being built under license in France and Germany. It was also the type named as the Avro rotor and used by the Royal Air Force. By the 1930s there was great interest in this type of aircraft from very serious aircraft designers and companies because it was seen as a way forward to the ultimate in aircraft operation, vertical takeoff and landing. You see here the latest development of the Sierra Autogyro, the only successful and practical form of rotating wing craft yet devised. It represents the culminating point of 13 years patient work on the part of its inventor, Signor de la Sierra. Compared with normal aircraft, or even previous autogyros, the most noticeable difference in features is that the machine has no fixed wings, ailerons, elevators, or even a rudder. The whole of the support of the machine in flight is taken by the three-bladed rotor above which rotates at a practically constant speed of 200 revolutions per minute. This rotor is not driven by the engine in flight, 
but by the action of the air upon the blade. If the control column is held in a central position, the machine flies straight and level. If it is moved to the left, the machine turns to the left. To the right, the machine turns to the right. Inclined backwards, the machine climbs, and if inclined forward, the machine dies. The Jeva continued development of the C-30 to achieve what the company called direct takeoff. This process involved overspeeding the rotors during pre-rotation with zero pitch, and then with the rotors re-pitched to their normal in-flight position, the aircraft leapt into the air. Development of Sierra gyroplanes lost direction at a key phase with the death of the founder himself in a commercial flying accident in 1936. We will see in part two the contribution of others and the enduring legacy.